there's something pure, something simple about driving an older car that there's no electronic gizmos to hamper your driving ability. There was very little conformity that they had to do. There's no government regulations and so on and so forth. It's driving in the purest form. There's no radio, there's no air conditioning. It's very raw. I am heel to toe on downshifts. I am really modulating the throttle when I go around and turn to make sure that if it does step out, I can catch it. If you can't catch it, you could be in a whole world of trouble. So you're on your own, but if you do it well, it's very, very rewarding, and it really sharpens your driving skill. As you know, a real one's 10 to $15 million. I, I looked in my left pocket, don't have that kind of money. But it's not a matter of owning the genuine article or owning something that was based on something else. The feeling is the same. One of my childhood heroes, Steve McQueen, happened to own an XKSS. So I'm not comparing myself to Steve McQueen, but I can only imagine what he felt like driving up and down Sunset Boulevard back in the late 50s. As a young boy, when you're 15 or 16, you look at all these cars that seems to be unattainable. I figure if one day I can own it, I would like to have that experience. So that's kind of the reason why I prefer a vintage car. There's a lot more soul, a lot more personality. My name is James Chen, and today I'm driving a 1957 Jaguar XKSS. Jaguar XKSS was derived from the D-Type. The D-Type was a racing Jaguar. Toward the end, Jaguar had some surplus inventory, didn't know what to do with it, street legal and built into an XKSS, and there was planned to have 25 cars made. Of the 25 cars, they built 16, and then there was a fire at the Jaguar factory. So 16 made it out, nine chassis were burnt to the ground. Part of the love I have for the XKSS is the fact that it's got 270 horsepower, short wheelbase, very nimble, and the fact that I can kick the rear end out pretty easily. The difference with a vintage car is I can have the same enjoyment and excitement at a lower speed compared to a modern car. Modern car, the threshold is so high, by the time you get the car sideways a little bit and to find the limit, and if you do hang on and execute, you're good, but if you don't, you're in a whole lot of trouble. I wanted an open top roadster, something sporty, but something quick by today's standard. So I want something that can go from zero to 60 in the fives. I can keep up with modern traffic. I started looking around. This kind of fits the bill. I located a car in the San Francisco area. He used to race a D-Type and he wanted something that he can drive on the street that is not as valuable as D-Type. So in the 1990s, he had this car commissioned by a company called Ram Engineering. So they specialize in building Jaguars and rebodying them to look like C-types, D-types, or XKSS. I went up to San Francisco, met the fella. He actually put the real D-type wheels with the spline drive onto this car, lend it to be even more of an authentic looking car. The best way to kind of shake it down was to take the car and drove it back from San Francisco to LA. Went through afternoon of hot, sun to nighttime, and then finally the electrical system has some issues. Lucas, the Prince of Darkness, strikes again. But that was my only way to shake the car down. Hey buddy, is that a real one or a fake one? It's not real, but it's not fake. What I have, I like to call it a recreation. It is based on a 64 E-Type, powered by a 3.8 liter a straight six. It's got the independent rear suspension as opposed to a solid axle on a real XKSS. So it drives better, I think. It drives quicker and it handles better. Not a whole lot of body roll. The ultimate mechanical grip is limited because it's got skinny little bias ply tires. But the feeling of the wind in your hair, the sound it makes, it's a very quick car, but not a fast car. And then we have the reimagination, which is kind of what Singer's doing for the Porsche. It's putting modern power plants with better brakes, but it's in a body of a vintage car. And then the last one is a replica. It's the guy with a, a Fiero that buys a Ferrari kit or a Lamborghini kit. So it looks like a Countach, a Diablo, but it's got a Pontiac power plant. 
to me, that is more of a replica than what I have. This car is titled as a 1964 E-Type. It uses a lot of components from the 64 E-Type and is largely based on that. So some of these rallies I love to attend, the car technically is eligible because it's pre-74 or whatnot. And it's a very usable car that I can enjoy it all year round. Driving a car and the love of having a car is a universal language. Last year, I went to a rally called Rally Nippon and we drove through the island of Taiwan. I met 50 drivers, 100 people all together from all walks of life. They're driving anything from 300 SL Goings to little Austin Healy bug eyes. And they didn't speak the language, but we all kind of share the same passion of traveling from one destination to another in a car that is self-expressive and different. At the end of the day, you know, we're looking at each other's cars. They're pointing at this, pointing at that. This is good, that is good. My Japanese is very, very rusty, but we all kind of understood each other. There's a genuine passion and alignment of this hobby that we're in. I think hobbies, like anything that's enjoyable, should be shared. I drive everything I own. So my Carrera GT, 9,000 miles. My Countach, 44,000 kilometers. The car is built to be driven. I think it's a real pity to keep them in a museum or keep them a lock away. I am grateful for the fact that my son shares the same passion with me on cars. And what's enjoyable is really taking him along for the ride. He's 15 and a half now, so I'm teaching him how to drive manual carts, which is a foreign terminology to millennials today. We enjoy doing simple repairs and taking care of the car. He's very much a part of my life. Cars are very much a part of our life as well. It does concern me today with the future of autonomous driving cars. Younger kids will become less interested in cars, and that could very well be it. But I'm going to try and do everything I can to maybe get them interested. My intention is to share this experience with other car enthusiasts out there and promote the car hobby.